All right, we are looking at this next example at the top of page 111. Let R, the region in quadrant one, bounded by y equals e to the x and x equals three, and the coordinate axes be the base of a solid whose cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are semicircles. Find the volume. All right, anytime we do this, we need to sketch, we need to know what that graph looks like. All right, we know that y equals e to the x has that point right there at zero, one, and we know it's an exponential curve. All right, so that's gonna be, I probably should color code these. That's y equals e to the x. All right, and then remember, x equals three is a vertical line. Y equals lines are horizontal, so x equals three is a vertical line at three. And then our other boundaries are the coordinate axes. So if I just kind of shade in this area um, of this region, it's this shaded area right here from the y-axis to x equals three, the top is y equals e to the x, the bottom is the x-axis. All right, so um, that's the first step, just drawing those graphs or those functions. Um, that's the base of our solid. And the next thing we're told is the cross section is perpendicular to the x-axis. So the cross sections are still like, I can still think of a rectangular piece that's touching that graph. So um, if it's perpendicular to the x-axis, these are dx rectangles. And I like to write that out because that tells me so much about what I'm integrating. My limits of integration are gonna be x values. My integrand is gonna be in terms of x and it's gonna end with a dx. All right, so um, when I pop out that cross section, and this is the part that like, it's hard to imagine. You could go back to that GeoGebra applet and try the semicircles, but those semicircles are coming out of the page. So the semicircles are coming out towards us and just that bottom part is slightly a rectangle. All right, so we've got our cross section. And um, we said that a big part of this is that we've got to know how to find the area of the cross section. So we know that the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So a semicircle is just half of that. So I could either write that pi r squared over two, or I could just write that as one half pi r squared, doesn't matter. So the thing that we're gonna need to figure out then is the radius. And if I look at my rectangle, the, the height of that rectangle, because remember the width is our delta x, which will become dx when we integrate, but the height is gonna be the distance between this top function, y equals e to the x, in the bottom, which is our x-axis. And remember, the equation for the x-axis is y equals zero. So the bottom is y equals zero, the top is y equals e to the x. So if that's the height, so like this height right here is e to the x minus zero, because that's our bottom equation is zero, so just e to the x. The question is, how does that relate to the radius? And I'm sure you remember from geometry that that is what we would call the diameter. So if the diameter is e to the x minus zero, just e to the x, the radius is half of that. One half e to the x or e to the x over two. All right, so that's what we're gonna, like that's all the information we're gonna need for our integrand. The other thing we need to consider are our limits of integration. So when we have dx rectangles, we go from left to right with our limits because those are x values. So we're told to use the coordinate axes, meaning we're gonna start here at zero, where x equals zero, and then we're coming all the way out here to where x equals three. All right, so the volume we're looking for, oops. 
is going to be the definite integral from zero to three. In here, I'm gonna just write A for a second for area. That's gonna be our area times our dx. So that's the part that we've gotta figure out. But we kind of already did. We know the formula, we know the radius. So um, I'm gonna rewrite this as from the definite integral from zero to three. We said the area is one half, because it's a semicircle, times pi times the radius squared. And we said the radius is one half times e to the x. And it's really important that we square that entire radius. All right, I'm gonna do some like cleaning this up before we jump to any like integration steps. So the first thing I'm gonna do is square that radius. So when I square this, one half times one half is one fourth. E to the x squared is the same as saying e to the two x. You could write e to the x squared. At some point we gotta change it e to the two x to make it easier. All right, this isn't that bad. It might look bad at first, it's not that bad. What I would do is I would take all the constant multiples and pop them out in front. Apply that constant multiple rule that we can multiply, um, we can pull all the constants out and multiply at the end. So one half times one fourth is one eighth. Multiply that by pi. We've got a pi over eight sitting out there. And then from zero to three, e to the two x dx. All right, this looks way more manageable than what we started with. This isn't so bad. So I would do a U sub here. Um, you could maybe do this one in your head, but I, I would mess it up, maybe you wouldn't. Uh, by the way, this is the, I've messed this problem up like two years in a row. This might be the first year I don't make a mistake. Um, so if I do a U sub, I'm gonna say U is two X, therefore DU is two DX. So um, I'm also gonna go ahead and just change the limits of integration. So u of zero would just be two times zero, which is zero. I think my pen is dying. And then u of three would just be two times three, which is six. So on the rewrite step, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna rewrite it first before I actually change the limits. So pi over eight, I'm gonna keep this in terms of x first, zero to three. We said we need a 2dx. Actually, I lied, that's too much work. I'm gonna do it up here, sorry. We said we need a 2dx, so if I put a 2dx in there, or a two in there to have 2dx, I need to also multiply by one half out here. So I'm just gonna do that now. So what's on the outside is now gonna be, instead of pi over eight, pi over 16. And then now I'm gonna go through and change the limits because we're gonna do the u sub in this step. So from zero to six instead of zero to three, and then the two dx is our du, and now we just have e to the u du. All right, now this is nice because I know the antiderivative of e to the u, it's everyone's favorite. It's just e to the u. So pi over 16 times e to the u, and we're going to evaluate that from zero to six. All right, so I'm just gonna keep that pi over 16 along for the ride. e to the sixth power is just e to the six minus e to the zero. So this is the same as pi over 16 times e to the six minus one. And from here, just however you wanna write it, we could write pi times e to the six minus one over 16. I'm gonna stop right there, that seems Perfect. All right, I hope you're having as much fun as I am with these. I'm not even kidding. I think because I, I do love geometry and I love calculus so much, I think this is just like my favorite topic we do this year. <laughs>